Sorry, Ben. <laughs> AJ, this is a really interesting point, I think, for a lot of people right now here because, mm -hmm. you know, we've, we're in the position to be given this truth and we're on this path, but mm -hmm. I would think that I probably speak for a lot of people here and as much as that we all have friends and family who don't want to be on this path and, um, you know, you know that I'm pretty game in putting it to people and yep. I do frequently and I get a lot of <laughs> knockbacks but that's fine. But I still have those people as friends and I accept that they don't want to know that truth. So, you know, I have friends that tell me stuff like you have just talked about that they've had abortions and they've been prostitutes and all this. And I recently had this experience and, and I said to this person, how do you feel about that? Are you... Do you feel like that that's okay? And she said, yeah, that, that's fine. I'm perfectly fine with that. Mm -hmm. So I feel that as a friend, I want to keep her as a friend. And I don't feel that, I mean, and I'm speaking for other people here. I, I feel that it's okay to have my friend and feel compassion that she feels that way um, without judging her for that. Is that... Yeah, I mean, but, but there's, a, there's a part of it that you're skipping over. Yeah. And that is, why don't you want to say what God's truth is about the issue? She, she's clearly told me in the past she doesn't want to know. <laughs> okay, so how do you feel about getting shut down about speaking about God's truth? Um, well, I, I feel that... Um, I feel that I'm not ready to wipe all my friends out who, don't, uh, who are not on this path. You, I never said for you to wipe out your friends, but it's interesting where you're going with you. Yeah, answer, it is. Right? I'm, I really want to put this out there because I, I think there's a lot of us want to ask it. Can you out, Carol? <laughs> That's all right. Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. What, what, what's going on inside when I ask that question? Um, it's a, it's, it, I guess it's a feeling that in the past I've had a lot of religious people trying to force their religions onto me and I think yeah. we've all probably felt this and I've felt it anyway um, and at the time I've sort of thought oh you know I don't want to hear this and I feel that I really love this path and it makes so much sense to me yep. but it's, it's the path I want to walk on and I put it to my friends and when they tell me that no, this is a load of crap, and you're in a, you're in a, you know, you're in a cult. Right. And they're starting to say, well, it's obviously working for you, so <laughs> it's okay. We'll let you be in it now. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they're good people too. You I'm know? not saying they're not, by the way. Yeah, no, no, I know you're not. But I'm just saying that I think a lot of us are in a position where we have good people as friends who are saying that to us that don't want to hear the truth mm -hmm. and see, how do you feel about how, how, how so you've got to be very careful friend? carol about your definition of a friend for a start yeah. um, and this is something that many of us don't want to acknowledge is a person a per being a friend to you when they tell you right that they don't like what you're doing and they don't allow you to say what you feel in particular if they don't allow you to say what you feel so in other words, if I've got to modify myself to be in your company, then what am I actually doing? Can you see that I'm not being unloving to myself? I'm being unloving to myself. Now, now, as soon as I do that, I'm going to harm my own relationship with God. In other words, I'll never become at one with God in that state. So remember at the start of this I said your relationship with God needs to be the most important thing you'll ever do. Now when the relationship with God is the most important thing I'll ever do, I will want firstly to never harm or never do anything myself that's going to harm my relationship with God. And one of the things that will harm your relationship with God is when you deny yourself and your own emotions. That always harms your relationship with God. Now, if a friend is asking you, and I put a friend in quotation marks, is asking you to deny yourself when you're with that friend, are they being loving to you in that particular situa situation? My answer is no. Your answer is yes, they could be. My answer is no. Um, I don't think my friend's ask me to be any different when I'm in their company, but I'm saying but that when they tell me something... you are when you're in their company. Sorry? But that? you are different when they're in their, comp in their company. You talk about mm. what that friend wants you to talk about 
and you stay away from the subjects that you would like to talk about but that friend won't allow you to talk about without getting upset with you or rejecting you. And that is an emotion inside of yourself, I agree, that you need to work your way through because in the end what will happen is you will not enter or engage in friendships that cause you to have to do that. Mm. Because you can't love yourself and can keep your connection with God. Oh, sorry. Other, you can't be unloving to yourself and keep your connection with God. Right? Mm. So, so in the end, you will not compromise yourself. And what you're being asked to do by your friends without you being really aware of it is you're being asked to compromise yourself when you're in their company. Now, a good friend will not do that to you. You don't ask them to compromise themselves when they're in your company, do you? Like, they're still allowed to be a prostitute in your company, aren't they? Mm. They're still allowed to be a drunkard in your company. They're still allowed to drink in your company. They're still allowed to smoke in your company, perhaps. Although smoking is a little different in the sense that if they're blowing it in your face, then there's a love issue there for yourself. But can you see, you don't change, you don't want to change them. You don't want to put stop them from feeling their emotions and, an, and it would be an act of, un, it would be an unloving act if you attempted to stop them from feeling their emotions. But why do you then engage with friends who want to stop you from feeling yours? But if a friend tells you something about themselves not asking you for the truth about what, what you think, they didn't, this friend didn't ask me to tell her what she was just telling me a story. Mm -hmm. I had to really stay out of judgment. I felt I was trying to stay out of judgment on that and yeah, said to I'm her... Not, you, if you love them, you will stay out of judgment, Carol. I'm not mm. talking about judgment. I'm talking about there's a burning desire in your heart to say what the truth is about the issue. God's mm. truth, not your own. Mm. And you're not responding to it because you're afraid of what's going to happen to the relationship if you do. And so it's a fear that you have. And any fear is going to prevent your moment with God. So where does that fit with throwing the <laughs> pearls in front of swine? Because if when you know person, they don't want to hear it. If that person doesn't want to hear it and I've told you you don't want to hear it, then what do you do as an act of love to yourself? Why do you remain in the company of people who are shutting you down mm. emotionally? Okay. The only answer is that you don't love yourself enough yet. Mm. Okay. That's the only reason why you would stay in, that, in their company. Okay. So when I'm saying don't throw your spells before swine, what I'm saying is love yourself enough mm. to, to be yourself with everyone around you all the time. And if they're unhappy with that, don't spend time in their company. Yeah. If okay. you're spending time with their company when they sh shut you down, you're not being loving to yourself. Yeah, okay. And remember on this path, it's not just about love of God because what God's teaching you to do as you progress towards God, is you're coming to love yourself as well. And you see, most of us don't want to give up the areas or the addictions we have about how we define love of self. So most of the time, most of us feel that we're loving to ourselves when everybody else wants to be loving to us. So in other words, as long as I've got 50 friends all being loving to me, it must mean I'm a good person. Right? It must mean I'm a happy person. It must mean I'm a whatever, you know, whatever we've defined as, you know, good in, in that interaction. The truth is that you can actually have a relationship with God and be completely happy and not need a single other person in your entire life. Now, in that state, you will have hundreds of people in your life, ironically, because you're actually staying in truth and you're staying in love and you're staying in humility and that will actually draw people into your life. But initially, you may have to go through losing current friends and gaining new friends in that process. Now, I'm not saying to reject your friends. What I'm saying is to be very sensitive about when they're rejecting you and causing you to reject yourself and work through the emotions inside of you that cause you to go along with that treatment. Does that make sense? And that's a whole group of emotions about love of self that we need to allow ourselves to focus on.